middle-aged mother of seven believed to be in her 40s and a man believed to be in his early 60s have been allegedly lynched at Zakalsi in the Mion district of the northern region on suspicion of engaging in witchcraft. The Northern Regional Reintegration Committee on Witchcraft Accusation and Disbandment of alleged witches comes have been reacting to the tragic incident. This is barbaric and an affront to human rights, especially as Ghana has signed on to a number of international human rights conventions, including CEDAW. The particular worrying uh, issue is that Madame Safura was killed in the four courts of the Zakalsi Nas Palace. The Pension of Bondholders Forum is demanding that government borrows from the Treasury Bills market to settle all outstanding coupons and principals on their bonds. Government has failed to pay 19 coupons and three principals since February after exempting members from the domestic debt exchange program. You keep people's money for 77 days without interest. If you can't even pay that, I think government should have come out and said, look, can I roll over this principal for a short period? Then investors will get interest on the rollover. But to keep people's money for 77 days without interest at this current inflationary uh, situation that we are in, you can't keep investors' money like that. Look, investors must be respected. Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram, Samuel Nate George, says a comparison between records of flag bearer hopefuls, Dr. Kobna Dufo and John Domani Mahama, is a mismatch. Dr. Dufo last week challenged John Mahama on his records to revive the struggling economy, but the NP is of the view that the matter speaks for itself. It's childish for an 80 year old man to be engaged in such desperate politicking because he wants to be elected flag bearer. When Mr. Dufo makes such comments, we should ask him, in the very unlikely event, in the 0.00001% probability chance that he becomes the flag bearer of the NDC, whose record is he going to be campaigning on? Is it not John Mahama's record? The National Security Minister, Albert Kandapa, says he disagrees with the Supreme Court decision allowing the Auditor General to surcharge public officials culpable for financial mismanagement. He was speaking at an event in Accra. In our countries, in holding public officials to account through disallowance and surcharge, the matters of functions and mandates of the Auditor General, the Parliament and the Public Accounts Committee must be reviewed and streamlined along with the pursuit of the requisite amendments of existing laws. The Food and Drugs Authority is urging food manufacturers and processors to register their products through its progressive licensing scheme to maintain consumer confidence in the local food system. Failure to meet appropriate regulatory requirements leading to arrest and closure of food outlets over safety concerns necessitated the implementation of the scheme. Times people who are manufacturing products here think that the registration process uh, is cumbersome and it's expensive. But uh, there's a flagship program that the Food and Drugs Authority has been pushing. And we think that the local industry should be up and doing, should take opportunity, should come to the Food and Drugs Authority job. That So we are urging people to take advantage of the progressive licensing scheme of the Food and Drugs Authority.
Well, this is just a piece of the documentary put together by the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining, showing the level of devastation that Galamse has done to our forest cover. Indeed, the Forestry Commission admits that out of the 288 forest reserves we have in the country, 34 of them, at least per their records, have illegal miners in there destroying the forest cover in the forest reserves. Now, bear in mind that, look, this, this could be more, okay? Because as the Forest Commission itself has admitted, they don't have the adequate resources to be able to clamp down on these illegal miners. And that's a worry. That's troubling. Think about it this way. They say that based on their own estimation, some 4,726 hectares of land, that's forest cover. These are lands in the forest reserves have been destroyed. 4,726 destroyed by illegal miners in forest reserves. Now, this is quite apart from what the Forestry Commission itself has done. Between 2018 and 2021, they gave forest entry permits to mining companies to enter a number of forest reserves in this country, at least as far as we do know and what we have seen over the period. Take a look at this. These are copies that we received. In fact, we're able to get exclusive access to these copies of entry permits that the Forestry Commission gave to companies to get into our forest reserves to go and prospect, and some of them using their prospecting license to mine, right? This is the level of threat that we, we're dealing with. And so far, we've been able to, as to count at as many as 47 forest entry permits that were given by the Forest Commission between 2018 and 2021 to companies to get into these forest reserves to mine. Now, if you don't understand the threat that you were dealing with, look at the amount of quantity of chemicals that the Ghana Water Company Limited is using to purify the water that you and I drink. That's why today we're spending time with Professor Kobna Fimpon Boating. After this leaked report, a number of the people captured in there have come out to deny the details of the reports captured by him. Up next, that exclusive interview with Professor Kobna Fimpon Boating come your way. He has been speaking to the details of the report and whether he stands by the details of it after these denials and responses by some of the persons captured in the report. Stay with me. We'll be back shortly after this quick break. That exclusive interview with Professor Kobnafi Pombwating comes up right after this quick break. Stay with us.